Your identity is the thermostat on your life, how Ed Milet puts it. Your identity regulates your environment and your results to get back to its baseline. You can decide who you want to be at any point in time and adopt that identity, align all actions to congruence with that identity, and then before you know it, you will have a stack of irrefutable proof that you are who you say you are, and now you have a new identity. The cool thing is you can decide who you want to be right now. What's going on, friends? I hope you are well. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. I am your host, as always, Jared Hamilton, and I'm so stoked that you are here. I'm going to be totally honest with you, though. This is the second time recording this because I actually just finished recording this whole or finished filming this entire entire episode. And then I looked at my screen and realized my mic was not on. I was like, fuck. Oh, no. So the camera was on, so we got great video, but the uh, the camera was off. I'm sorry, the, but the mic was off. So um, we are refilming this entire bad boy, so you, go, you guys don't just have to put up with shitty um, shitty audio from the camera. So we are refilming the entire thing. So um, hopefully this works out better than the first one. So I really appreciate you being here. Today's episode, we are talking about mental shifts that put fat loss on autopilot. Like, how dope would that be if you could just put your, your weight loss and watching the pounds come off and the inches drop and you feeling better and looking better on autopilot where you didn't have to think about it as much. That's what we're going to get into because what got me thinking about this content specifically for this episode was, um, last night I, at the time of filming this last night, I hosted my big never struggle losing weight ever again, masterclass. And basically the premise of it is you're focusing on the wrong shit. Most people who are struggling with all of this stuff, what's stopping you from losing weight has nothing to do with calories, workouts, meals, carbs, any of that shit. Even a more sustainable plan and for most people isn't, isn't the problem. Like I have people who are on the most sustainable plans out there. Or I see people doing them. They'll do like my free programs or whatever the case is, but they're still struggling because the, the inner inner game issues have never been resolved and never been fixed. So that's what, what the masterclass was on. So that's one of the things that I was talking about a lot was a lot of these inner game things is, is your autopilot, right? So that's what we're talking about today is how to put like these, I have what, five things on my list, five things that you need to do to make these mental shifts happen. That's going to put your fat loss on autopilot. So that's what we're di diving into today. Um, now before we do massive, thank you to the sponsors of the show. Uh, sponsor number one is flex pro. I actually just had one of their meals. I just had, I think it was their truffle meatloaf. It was basically truffle mashed potatoes and, and meatloaf. And I am obsessed with it. It is so good. I don't know how they make their truffle mashed potatoes taste that way and keep them so low calorie, but dear God, they're so good. Anyway, um, the thing that I love about flex pro so much is it, it helps people in so many, so many cool ways. Number one, it makes, it's more autopilot stuff where it makes, it's just one less thing you have to think about. It makes this game so much easier and more simplistic when you always have meals on deck ready to go. So when life does hit you sideways, which it always does sometimes, you're not scrambling, you're not living in drive throughs uh, At the end of the day, it's just a better setup. So if that's your cup of tea, you should definitely check them out because A, they're cheaper than going through a drive through B, they're going to save you more time than ending up in a drive through a gas station. And C, they're made by a chef and taste amazing. So if you're into that, definitely check them out at flexpromeals.com or there's a link below. But if you're into saving money, you should use my code HamiltonTrained and it'll save you like 20% at checkout, which is pretty legit. Now, our second sponsor is First Form. I actually don't have on my First Form shirt. If you're watching in the YouTube video I have on my legendary cat dog shirt that apparently everyone in, on Instagram loves because 90s cartoon life. Um, I do think my hat though I'm wearing is first form. But anyway, um, big thank you to first form because we all know that supplements are not the end all be all. They're called a supplement for a reason, but they do have their time in their place if you are missing certain marks with your actual food. Because let's be real, you're probably not eating enough fruits and vegetables. You're probably not getting enough micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. You're probably not getting enough protein and you're probably inflamed as fuck because you're not having enough omegas and things like that. So at the end of the day, supplements absolutely have their time in their place, but they're just not everything. So if there's these areas you're missing with food, you should probably look into some of the supplement forms of that. I just want to make sure you have a good spot to go to where you're actually getting products that are accurate, safe, and the effective dose, and they're actually made in a real, real place, not someone's basement. Because most people, let's be real, go to Amazon to find the least shittiest tasting or most tolerable and the cheapest. But the problem is that very rarely gives you a great outcome. 
Like a lot of times this is when like protein shakes will upset your stomach or you'll get heartburn from this or your heart will flutter with that or whatever the case is. So I just want to make sure that your money is getting you the value that you're promised. So that's why we work with first form. Definitely go check out the link below. There's a free shipping set up with it. Um, but otherwise I let's get into the, the nuts and bolts of what you came to the show for. So let's talk about these mental shifts. So mental shifts that are putting your fat loss on autopilot. Number one, um, well, actually, before we get into number one, I want you to think of it this way. Let me let me give you an, an analogy here. I want you to picture a a jet, like you're, you're not just any jet, but I want you to picture like you're trying to go from where you're at to where you want to be as fast as possible. Like you are trying to go from, let's just say you're here in Indiana with me and you're trying to get to, let's say, uh, California, let's say San Diego. You're trying to get from here to there as fast as possible. So you buy the best jet. You get the best engines, the best turbines, you get the best pilot, you get the the most aerodynamic wings, you get the best landing gear. You literally pimp this thing out so you can get from here to there as fast as humanly possible. But here's the, the, the one thing. Your autopilot's off. Your autopilot is set to put you in Hawaii. You're trying to get to San Diego. And, and you built this jet to get there as fast as possible to get from where you're at now to where you want to be, but your autopilot's off. Are all those things going to help you get to San Diego faster? Of course not. The jet will go faster, but it's taking you further away from your destination, isn't it? That's where most of you that are listening or watching, if you're watching this on the YouTube are at, because you're trying to soup up your jet. You're trying to get from where you're at now to where you want to be, lose the 30 pounds, feel better, look better, all that. But the problem is, you're trying to do the best diet, the most workouts, burn the, the most amount of calories possible, eat the cleanest food, eat, do all the things. But the problem is your autopilot is set on struggle, failure, and gain weight and yo-yo diet. So then you wonder why you're doing all the things and it doesn't work. One of the questions that I asked on the masterclass last night is I asked everyone, like um, all the people that were on there, I said, how many of you guys feel like it's just something deeper holding you back. I go, you do all the things that the gurus and the Instagram pages say, you're counting your calories, you're watching your macros, you're doing your workouts, you're on a diet more than you're off a diet. You're literally always obsessed about weight loss, but then ironically, either it doesn't work or it works for like this long and then you always gain the weight back. And then just like 70 comments come through like, yes, this is me. Oh my gosh, you're talking to me. Like, oh, that's my story in my life. It's because it is deeper. It's because your autopilot's fucked up. It's because that is what's off. We have to fix that autopilot. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, you can you can do the most even sustainable plan out there. To be real with you, inside my Fat Loss Simplified Facebook group, if uh, if you're not in there, you should be in there. Um, a few months ago, I just dropped in the, the most sustainable and chill uh, three-month program I've ever made. It's called Project 90, and it's a 90-day program that's so sustainable, it's, it's almost too easy. But you know what happens? Most people never finished it. Most people make it 14 days and then fall off. Is it, and it's the most, I, I, I know it cause I made it. It's the most sustainable plan, the easiest plan, the least amount of time ever involved. And it's, it's so simple and sustainable that anyone could do it. Well, then why is it everyone, no one, no one, not everyone completed it is because their autopilot was set to fall off in 14 days. Their autopilot was, um, to gain weight. Their autopilot was to, to yo-yo like every other time to sabotage, to, to struggle, to binge eat, to all these different things. So you could even have the most sustainable plan ever, but if your internal autopilot is not fixed, you will struggle forever. It's the number one reason people come to coach with us is because we fix that internal autopilot first and it's our first priority. Then we go into weight loss. And so it sticks this time. So let's talk about how to fix this internal autopilot. Um, number one is your identity. Hear me when I say this, your identity, what like to put simply what your identity is, it's, it's who you think you are, the story that you re replay re that you play in your head over and over again. Your identity could be like that of like, let's say, say what, it, what most people are thinking. Your identity is you're the fat person. So then what happens every time you lose weight, you subconsciously find your way to gain your weight back. Your identity could be a dieter. Like, oh, I'm a dieter. I've been on a diet for most of my life. So then you lose the 30 pounds. One thing leads to another. And now you don't need to diet anymore, but now you're, but your identity is a dieter. So it's a threat now. So now you find a way to gain the weight back to fulfill the identity of dieter. So now you can go back to dieting again. That's the problem. Let's say your identity is a binger or an emotional eater. It's just who you are. 
Well, what do you think is going to happen when you go two or three weeks without binge eating or emotional eating? Something magically is going to happen. that's going to bring you back to fulfilling the prophecy of your identity. Your identity is the thermostat on your life. How Ed Milet puts it, that your identity regulates your environment and your results to get back to its baseline. Right. And in my house, my thermostat thermostat is usually at 69. Well, if my dog kicks the door open on a day like yesterday, that was hot as fuck. Well, my room temperature heated up to 80. Well, what's going to happen is the thermostat kicks on and cools the room back off. So if your internal uh, identity or your internal thermostat is set at struggling, weight gain, yo-yoing, overweight, sabotager, well, your environment's going to heat up to like when you start losing weight, doing better, being consistent, something's going to happen to cool your results back off to where you're set at down here. That's why your identity is one of the biggest causes of your autopilot. It's literally where it's set at. So the problem is most of you watching and listening to this have an identity that's either based in solely your struggles. So if, and if your identity is made up of all the things that you don't like about yourself, like good luck fixing those because you'll sabotage back to them. That's how psychology works. That's a problem. But then so many of you guys have your identity caught up in um, just how you got here. So you just assume that's who you are. But don't leave your identity where it's at because somehow you ended up here. You can decide who you want to be at any point in time and adopt that identity, align all actions to congruence with that identity. And then before you know it, you will have a stack of irrefutable proof that you are who you say you are. And now you have a new identity. But the cool thing is you can decide who you want to be right now. You have no responsibility to be the same person you were five minutes ago. That's the truth. It's hard. Because guess what? The old identity doesn't go down easy. The old, old identity operates on a survival, right? You, you're, the way your brain works is um, with all of this stuff is its number one goal is self-preservation. Your brain doesn't care if you're happy. Your brain just makes some, wants to make sure you don't die. So if you've lived your life with this old shitty identity, now you, you're coming in to go, I want to change my identity and my, my, and my autopilot. Your brain's going to go, you're just now coming to do this. I've been operating here for like the past 10 years. Good fucking luck. I'm not going to go down that easy. And that's what happens. But when you over time put this new identity in and the old old identity goes down, now you're going to not, instead of sabotaging down to the old identity, your new identity is going to pull you up. That's where, why this gets so important and why this is so crazy. So number one fix is your identity and who you think you are. Because again, most of you have an identity because someone else put it there when you were defenseless, when you, when you didn't know any better, excuse me. You ever get one of those like tickles in your throat that like you start hacking and coughing and then you can't talk for like five minutes. I can feel it right here. So, um, but that, that's what happens is with your identity, someone put this identity in you that wasn't yours. You struggled when you were a little kid. So your mom called you a struggler or a worrier or a, or a, oh, we're just overweight people. That's just who we are. Oh, we're just dieters. Someone else put that identity in there. One of my favorite questions to ask people, especially clients, when they say, oh, I'm a blank. I go, who taught you that? Who told you that? Because you did not come out of the womb being blank, a dieter, an overweight person, a struggler. When someone says, oh, it's just who I am, I go, who taught you that? Because it's not true. Oh, I'm dumb. Who taught you that? Who told you you're dumb? Because it's not true. We have to be very careful about the identities we choose to take on because we literally play that role and then get what's in alignment with that role. And then that just becomes who we are. Excuse me. So be very, very careful. So that's why autopilot shift number one is you have to change your identity to something that serves you to the kind of person that you want to become because you don't just get, you have to become someone who gets here's, excuse me. Here's what I mean by that. One of my favorite authors, James Allen says, we don't get what we want. We get what we are. Therefore to get more, we have to become more. You can't stay the same shitty version of yourself down here and get great results. You have to become a person who happens to get those results. So instead of saying, how do I get, you have to start asking, who do I have to become who gets imagine like, let's give it a different analogy. Imagine your kid gets shitty grades in school. And they want to get good grades in school to make varsity or whatever. But they, they don't show up to, to homework on time. They don't turn their homework in. They don't show up to class on time. They don't study. They're half asleep in their rooms, all this stuff. But your kid's like, oh, shit, I need to get good grades if I want to get on the football team. So they, don't, they shouldn't ask, how do I get good grades? They go, 
Who do I have to become who gets good grades? Oh, I need to become someone who shows up on time. I need to become someone who is intentional with their homework. I need to become someone who turns in their homework. They have to become a good student. What do good students do? They Or what do good students get? They get good grades. You can't be a shitty student and get good student results. You have to become a good student. What do good students get? Great results. So for you, if you have shitty results, it's because you have probably a shitty identity because your subconscious actions, which are 90% of the time, by the way, are in alignment with your identity. So who do you have to become? Who gets what you, the thing that you want? So autopilot mental shift number one is you have to fix your identity, who you think you are. Number two, your reticular activating system, your RAS for short, essentially it's what you focus on. So you have this thing that sits in the back of your head called your reticular activating system. If you want to see a picture of it, Google it, hit images. It looks like a little ping pong ball that sits, sits down by your brainstem. So your RAS is your filter on life. It's crazy. To give you an idea of other areas your RAS, RAS kicks in is whenever, like remember that car that you had that that you say you drive like a white van and you'd see it everywhere. Then you sold the white van and now you bought like a blue car. Now you see that car everywhere. That's your RAS kicking in. Or you could be at like a football game if you're a parent and people are yelling, screaming, all this stuff. Then all of a sudden your kid yells mom and you're just like, that's my baby. And you just like, Whoom, because your, your brain picks up on it because it's important to you. Um, it's these kind of things. That's your RAS. Well, in the world of weight loss, your RAS is just going to show you more of what you're hyper fixated on, what you're focusing on, and going to hide the opposite of that. So for those of you who go, I should be further ahead. Oh my gosh, I may have lost a little bit of weight, but uh, I still have like 80 more pounds to lose. Or, um, or how many of you that said, oh yeah, I guess I lost an inch or two. My clothes are fitting better, but the scale hasn't moved. You're living in lack. You're living in that place of it's never good enough. So you're programming your RAS to only show you uh, shit, is only, is only showing you how terrible things are and only going to show you more of that story. And it's going to hide from you everything else. So if you're like, man, weight loss is hard, if that's what you're focusing on, it's going to show you all the reasons weight loss sucks and it's going to hide every reason it could be easy. That's the scary part. Or you could go, or you could have the belief that, no, Jared says weight loss is simple and easy. And, and like, okay, I know it's out there. Your brain is going to show you the simple and easy ways to lose weight. And it's going to hide the harder ones. That's the crazy part is you have evidence on both sides. If you say, oh, uh, my, my, I, I'm not meant to lose weight. Your RAS is going to go bet. I'll show you all the reasons you're not meant to do it. And it'll hide all the other reasons. So if you live in the place of um, like, oh, I never see progress or, oh, I, I haven't lost enough. I should have lost more by now. Your brain's going to go, you're right. I'm going to show you how true that is. And it will hide all the wins from you. We see this with, with, uh, we have to have this conversation with clients a lot. Um, I had a client one time who she turned in her check and stuff. And I looked at her pictures and I'm like, holy shit, girl, you are looking like amazing. Your, your pictures are so different. And she goes, Jared, I just don't see it. Can you, can you point it out? And I go, I'd love to, but I want you to do it first because it's, I knew if I could get her to find these, it's going to do so much for her psychology than me just telling her. I said, I said, okay, I will, but you have to go first. I said, I want you to point out every single difference. But here's the difference. I said, I want you to just, just act like I'm going to pay you a thousand dollars per item. She's like, Oh wow. I didn't actually pay her a thousand dollars, but I said, I want you to look at these pictures with the intention of every difference. I will pay you a thousand dollars. All of a sudden she went from having none, zero, zero wins to she found 10 or 15. She's like, oh, well, I have a double chin in that picture, not in that picture. Oh, my stomach is sticking out a lot here. Now it's flat. Oh, I didn't have that line in my leg here. Now I have it in this picture. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So wait, where were these 10 minutes ago? The difference was she looked with intention. She was trying to find them because naturally we are cynical about our own progress or lack thereof with our own stuff. So we naturally default to negative. Oh, it's not there. It's not good enough. When it's there, you just have to look for it. And then, you know what happened ironically? That next week, I got a bunch of emails from her saying, Jared, you wouldn't believe it. I'm fitting in these clothes I haven't worn in years. Or she was like, Jared, um, I saw this. I was at the gym and I never had lines in my arm before. Now I can see where my shoulder separation's at and the delt lines. You, you guys really think that's because that randomly showed up that week? Or do you think it's because her hyper fixating on all her wins and how well she's doing? I finally got her to recognize them. Now her brain just said, Oh, bet I'm going to show you more. 
That's what happened. You have to understand your RAS is, is like, uh, is like a gun. It just knows how to go bang. Like a gun has no morality. A good guy can shoot a bad guy or a bad guy can shoot a good guy. A gun doesn't care. A gun just goes bang. Your RAS doesn't care what you pointed out. It just goes bang. If you say, RAS, show me how terrible my situation is. It'll go bet, bang. And then it shows you how terrible things are. Or you go, RAS, show me how great things are and how much I'm winning. It goes bet, bang. And it shows you everything. But at all times, this is why, this is why, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is why you'll have some people have uh, an obstacle come and they'll go, oh, I can't, do, I can't do this now. And it will be legitimate as fuck. Or you'll have people go, an obstacle will come and they'll go, how can I find a way around this? And there's another option, legitimate as fuck. It's because your RAS just shows you what your focus is on. You, what you, you find exactly what you look for. And your RAS shows you that. So this is why it's another autopilot thing. Because if you're trying to find ways to make weight loss simple, easy, doable, and all your wins, your RAS goes, bet, I'll show you. But it also, if, you're, if, you're, if your uh, intention is and thought is, weight loss is so hard, it's so overbearing, I don't have time, I don't have the money, I don't have the whatever, it's going to go, bet, I'll show you how you don't. It's the game most, it's the biggest game changer ever. It either, either opens your mind, or I'm sorry, opens your mind or closes it but it's all along those autopilot things. Next, number three, um, daily shifts to put your fat loss on autopilot. Number three is daily reflection. How did I do today? You cannot f- make these decisions and get your autopilot really, really skilled unless you have some reflection to see how well you did in course correct. Because you're not gonna go from sucking to autopilot effortless. That's just not how the game works. It's a skill set. It's like if someone's no one goes from like binge eating to intuitive eating overnight. It's it's a process and that's a higher level skill. So for you though, you have to be able to audit how these things are, how your identity is, how your res is, how your actions are. So every day you you need to audit yourself and go, okay, how did I do today? How's my identity identity today? Oh, did I slip back into the old identity? How's my RAS today? Was I, was I, what was I focusing on? What was I thinking about the majority of the day? Was I focusing on how hard it is and how much of a victim I am? Or was I thinking about how good I'm doing and how I'm unstoppable and how I can do all these things or whatever the case is? You need to reflect daily on all of your stuff to go, hmm, how am I doing? Because if you just go through this game like a buoy in the ocean, it will go wherever the ocean waves take it which means you're not in control. But for you to get to the point where you're very skilled with this, you have to be able to reflect and think about what you think about and think about your actions and your identity and your your focus and your intention because then you could go, mm, I started to slide a little bit and then course correct. Think of it this way. Like with our clients, we do check-ins every single week. It's because it's like a little reflection moment. It's one, yeah, holds the client accountable, but it also lets us see the data so we can make moves, educated decisions around what to do with our clients. But you can do this also, it's not the same as like our check-in, but you can do these little mini daily reflections with yourself. Like, hey, let me just check in. How did I do today? Be honest and then course correct. So that's another big one to help with this. Number four, daily inner work. As in, you cannot overcome yourself if you can't be with yourself. Here's the thing. If you think about everything we've talked about with this autopilot stuff, it's all a you versus you thing. It's a relationship you have with yourself. It is you to you, your identity, your reticular activating system, your ability to to be with yourself and reflect and be honest with yourself, your self-awareness, your sabotaging mechanisms, your all of this stuff. So what's stopping you really from getting to where you want to be is you. So if you cannot sit with yourself, you will not be able to overcome yourself. Please hear me when I say that. How can you fix a relationship with a person if you refuse to spend any time or communicate with them? If you and your partner, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, are having a beef, how can you get through it while avoiding it and without even talking? You won't. It's why most relationships end because of lack of communication. But you don't communicate with yourself. You don't sit down with yourself. You don't do enough inner work. You don't meditate. You don't journal your emotions. You don't sit with your triggers and thoughts. If anything, most people avoid that stuff like the plague. So... If you cannot sit with yourself and be with yourself, how do you overcome yourself when you are the foundation of everything, the result and the sabotage and struggle? So this is why part of putting your fat loss on autopilot is you have to get crazy self-aware and learn about yourself and be with yourself. This is why you should be journaling frequently. 
Journal your emotions, journal how you're feeling, journal your thoughts, think about those things. This is why you should be sitting with yourself. Sitting in silence is so powerful. Getting clarity, letting the, the crazy noise start to drop and get and be able to listen and spend time with yourself. Most of you will do anything but spend time with yourself. It blows me away how many people will do keto diet, do like CrossFit 18 days a week and starve themselves and restrict and spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on supplements and do all this crazy shit. But then when I go, hey, I want you to meditate for five minutes and sit in silence, they're like, oh, I can't do it. My brain won't shut up. You don't think that's the problem? You don't think the fact that you've been avoiding that's the problem? You don't think the fact that you run from your emotions with food, with your kids, with your work, with cleaning your house, with busyness, with scrolling, You don't think that's the problem of why you can't get to where you want to be? Because what's stopping you is you. Like we said, it's your identity, your reticular activating system, your routines, your sabotaging, your emotions, your triggers. And then ironically, though, you won't sit with yourself. We won't be with ourself. Do you don't think that's the problem? It is the problem. So part of putting this fat loss on autopilot and getting crazy self-aware is daily inner work. If you don't know how to do it, I actually, I'm pretty sure in this lineup of podcasts, I have an episode on meditating and journaling. Um, I know I have a really in-depth module in the academy and we talk about this with coaching a lot, but um, I think I still have a like a like a intro to this in uh, in the podcast lineup. So check that out. And lastly, number five, mental shift to put fat loss on autopilot is, sorry if I'm looking at my notes and my left contact is fuzzy, um, the plan itself, as in it needs to be minimalistic, sustainable, and simple. Here's the thing. Most of you can't put your fat loss on autopilot because your plane is, or because your uh, your plan is too crazy. I had a lady who signed up for coaching. She applied and signed up for coaching the other day, and um, one of her biggest issues was motivation. She's like, "I'm just never motivated. It goes crazy." And I agree, we should never rely on motivation. But I told her, I said, "You, you know, after I heard the whole story, I go, it's not your fault because you trying to starve yourself, do a keto diet, and work out like crazy, like an hour and a half a day." That plan is incapable of being motivated with because it's too crazy. It's too overwhelming. It doesn't fit your lifestyle. It doesn't fit your day to day. Of course, you're not going to be motivated because the plan is incapable of it. It's the same thing with most of you watching or listening to this is, is you, the reason you can't put your fat loss on autopilot is because you're doing too much. You write, you, you're listening to 18 different people. You're like, okay, I got to get up and do this crazy weird morning routine, have this crazy weird power shot of all these different potions, pills, and powders. And then I got to go to the, do this crazy workout plan with do this, 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 and this, spend an hour and a half at the gym a day. Then I got to eat six times a day, but they've all got to be like this, but then I've got to schedule this and I've got to do this. And then uh, I got to have all these different supplements. And then I have to carb cycle and calorie cycle, but then I have to do it in a fasting window while eating vegan, make it keto friendly. That's half the reason you're failing is because your plan is too much. It's too crazy. It's unsustainable. We have to make this minimalistic, simple, and sustainable. That's how we do this. Um, now, again, you could have the best plan in the world, like a plan that I would put together for you or my team would put together for you. But if you don't fix your identity, your reticular activating system, have self-reflection, do daily inner work, you'll fail at all. It will, it will sabotage itself. It's like the autopilot thing on the plane analogy, or like the foundation on a house. If you don't have a foundation, the house will crumble. It's no different here. Your internal game is your foundation of your house or the autopilot on your jet. That's what this is about. But at the end of the day, with talking about putting all this on autopilot, if the plan itself is incapable, and if it's just not doable and simple, it's not going to work. If you look at the areas in your life you have on autopilot, it's simple. It's sustainable. It's predictable. It's minimalistic, like brushing your teeth. Actually, that's what I, it's why brushing teeth is my favorite analogy for fat loss is because, um, it's the arguably what you've been most consistent ever with in your life. You, it never, it takes up any more mental bandwidth than the two minutes you're doing it. Even then you're half asleep and then it's a non-negotiable. And then no matter how your day does, you always do it. You never go, Oh shit, I forgot. I'm going to start off Monday, right? It's not how it works. And you plan on doing it till you die. So it's so chill, minimalistic, and part of your routine and on autopilot completely. So instead of trying to force fat loss and all this, why don't we just make it on autopilot and make it just like brushing your teeth? For most of you, weight loss is more like a root canal versus just brushing your teeth. So that's how to do it. So those are the um, the five keys and the mental shifts you need to have to put your fat loss on autopilot. So a little bit of a recap. Number one is fix your identity, which is who you think you are. Number two is your reticular activating system or RAS. It's what you focus on. Um, Your daily reflection, as in how did I do? This way you can course correct. 
Number four, your daily inner work. Because if you cannot sit with yourself, you cannot overcome yourself. And then number five, your plan itself. It has to be simple, sustainable, and doable. That way it works with your life. So those are the five shifts mentally to make, to, you need to make to put your fat loss on autopilot. Now, before you go, I do have a few different announcements um, and some of them are a little bit different. So don't be so quick to, to click away. Number one, um, thank you for being here. If you have not yet subscribed to the show, be sure and do it. Check on all the goodies I have in the, the description. Like I have my free course, uh, my free Facebook group, the YouTube, all of that stuff. But what I want to talk to you about for a second is an update and then uh, a cool opportunity. So um, update is everyone because again, this is uh, the dieting from the inside out podcast. So a lot of you guys have gone through my academy. So for those that have, uh, that have the, my academy that have, that have, that have invested in it and are, and are going through it or have gone through it. Um, by the time you guys listen to this, I will have dropped some brand new material in the academy for you. Uh, I'm actually going to pull up, um, that real quick so I can tell you what they are. So super exciting. There's, I have literally brand new material in the academy for you right now. Um, so some of the new modules, because for those that don't know, my academy is my giant video course on strictly the inner game. Like all the things that we're talking about, it's like my podcast, but on steroids. And there's content inside the academy that isn't, that it's not in my show. Um, at all. So the con the, the, the academy is, is specifically a toolbox and an arsenal, like a vault of how to fix all these specific issues. Like for example, like there's a module on how to fix your relationship with food, how to stop binge eating, how to stop emotionally eating, how to stop sabotaging, um, how to stop the knowing what to do, but not doing it, how to be consistent, how to handle inner child as it applies to weight loss. Like all of these deeper issues, that's actually what's holding you back. I give you the exact frameworks on how to fix all of these. It's an amazing, it's an amazing asset. So we have a lot of people who listen to the show that's gone through it. So I just dropped a bunch of new modules in it. So specifically though, my, the newest module is I have one being present in fat loss. This way it's going to make things way easier and way simpler with decision-making. Um, I just dropped in one, two, three brand new mentality modules. Um, the in spite of mentality, the power of better and finish the damn day. This way you can adopt these mentalities to make struggle just disappear. Um, the next one I have dropped in is questions to ask yourself when you want to quit. That one's really powerful and will save so many people so much struggle. Um, another one of my favorites I just add, I just put in mastering maintenance and the art of adding calories back. So basically how to go through that mentally without gaining a bunch of weight. And then lastly, one of my favorite modules, um, I put win stacking and it's called win stacking to make fat loss easier. Um, that one alone is like a 30 or 35 minute module. Um, but we got into that. Then I also, I still have um, all the bonus basics in there. So after people go through it, I show you how to lose weight, keep it off, audit progress and all that. But I went ahead and also included in my uh, momentum building challenge training series. So uh, I created this product or this thing called the momentum building challenge, basically showing you exactly how to get momentum. So you're unstoppable and get you off the ground. You want to talk about plain analogies. Most people don't even get off the ground. So I created a system that's proven called the momentum building challenge on how to get off the ground where you get so much momentum that you can't be stopped. So that's a six training series. So I, I walk you through all that. So I included that. So for those that have the Academy, because you already have it, um, these modules are just going to pop up in your account by the time you're watching and listening to this, which is dope. Now for everyone else who hasn't, I am going to give you a quick little offer. Um, so I'm going to, give, going to give you a cool opportunity. So the, the actual MSRP, like if I, so basically whenever I create the Academy, um, if I wanted to put so much value in it. It was like a no brainer when people want to invest in it and get it to where it's a no brainer. I meet each one of these trainings where I would value each of them between three to $500 a piece. So the whole Academy has a, like the this total value is like a little over around six grand. If I remember right now, I I'm not going to actually sell it for that. So after all the modules have currently been added to it, um, it's normal walking rate is $2,500 because I raised the rate because of all the new material in it. So the, the normal walking around rate of the Academy is 2,500 bucks, which I still think is a hell of a deal. Now, what I'm going to offer my podcast listeners, just because you're from the show, um, just because you're on the, I mean, from the show, I'm not blasting this everywhere. It's only talking about it here. I am going to give you a special offer where you can get it at the final opportunity to get it at the, the, at 
basically for nine ninety seven. So I'm going to give it to you at just a thousand dollars. So over half off. So I would normally sell it for twenty five hundred dollars, and it could be yours for just one payment of nine ninety seven. Um, I will because of the podcast dropping and everyone listens to it at different times. I will put a special link where you can access that special rate only inside there. Um, otherwise, that's the only spot you can go to to get it at this rate. Now because a bunch of bunch of people have been are already asking me um if for some reason you can't do the the like the full 997 I do 100% offer payment plans um that's not a big deal at all I I would hate for money to be the one thing that's stopping you from getting the help that you need so um if you do need a payment plan um and need you know want that to see what that would look like I want you to email my uh email us just email admin at hamiltontrained.com and what we'll do is we'll we'll send you over like payment plan options that way we can make this doable for you cuz I'm telling you you deserve to never struggle ever again and I I have the utmost faith and confidence that this academy will do that for you without a doubt in my mind. So that's what's on the table. I will leave all these links below for you. Um, otherwise, be sure and subscribe to the show. I love you and I will talk to you next time. <laughs>